Hey, what's going on everyone? In a previous video, I showed you how to make this battery compartment, which houses the lithium-ion 18650 batteries. I have since completed a new project. I call this the double barrel shotgun approach. <laughs> um, this will hold 12 of the 18650. Ah, sorry about that. This will hold 12 of the 18650 lithium-ion batteries. So basically it's the same system as this but in theory the power capacity should be about doubled so you're probably wondering hey so if this compartment can power up a six inch screen fish finder for eight nine hours why does the voodoo person need something like this well good question and here's why on occasion you will find me on this ride Allow me to go off on a tangent here. Now, I bet you don't know this, but the horseshoe crab, its nearest uh, living relative, is actually the spider. They are related, although you wouldn't think so. In the same vein, you would think that the pro angler is closely related to other fishing kayaks, but in reality, its closest living relative is a frickin' barge. And the thing is a monster. One time, I strained my back just looking at it. Seriously though, I do love my Pro Angler. On the water, there is nothing more stable and there is nothing more comfortable. Of course, getting it to and from the water is a little bit of a chore, but again, once you get it on the water, it is a phenomenal ride. And really, the only reason I don't use it much more is because on the water, it feels about half a mile slower than the Outback. And the Outback is no sports car. Um, so the kind of days that I like to spend out on the water involve, you know, 12, 15 miles, uh, 8, 10, 12 hours. And so uh, on days like that, that half a mile does matter. Now, getting back to the battery thing, uh, because on the Pro Angler, I'm not really constrained by weight and space to any uh, great degree. I can afford to kind of go off on the deep end, which means I can run this monstrosity. Okay, this is a nine inch, um, Garmin Echo Map fish finder with all the trimmings. So it has down view, side view. And as an added benefit, if the fishing is ever slow, I can take in a football game, maybe an adult film, you know. So I'm gonna guess that that fish finder is going to need more power than a little battery pack can provide. And necessity being the mother of invention, I came up with the double barrel special. So what the Honey Badger Double Barrel Special consists of are two of these guys here. And they are very similar to the red battery container. Um, they both house six of the 18650 lithium ion batteries. Now there is one big difference. With the red containers or battery holders, they will output 12 volts. These will output 8.4 right here. Only 8.4. So that means that one of these cannot power up any of my Garmin fish finders because the Garmin's need a minimum of 10 volts. So what I've done here is I've taken two of the 8.4 volt battery packs and I have coupled them via series, not parallel. So when you combine batteries or battery packs, you can combine them in a couple of ways. If you combine them in parallel, you don't add the voltages, you basically up the capacity. If you combine them in series, that means you take the voltages and you add them together. Um, please do your research and don't assume that I know what I'm talking about. And so with the double barrel battery compartment setup, I'm going to test it on the multimeter and it reads 16.51. And again, um, I'm only testing with Garmin. I repeat, only testing with Garmin, not Lorance, not Humminbird. And I know that my Garmin fish finder, I can feed it anywhere from 10 to 20 volts. So this should be safe. And we're going to connect the transducer, okay, because the transducer does consume power. And um, so we're gonna connect it and we're going to make sure that we have it in water because these high powered uh, transducers do uh, generate heat and if you uh, run them without water they may overheat. Okay, I run all my transducers inside the hull using duct seal 
but with the side view units, you cannot uh, have the transducer in hull. In order to fully utilize the side view function, you have to have the transducer outside the hull. As I mentioned before, I am primarily an ocean fisherman, so I'm not really concerned about the side view. So um, I'm okay with it. But again, if you plan to use the side view function, the transducer must be outside the hull with no obstructions. All right, so we're going, I mean, this is not very super scientific, but I'm gonna shoot um, a beam into the water at the start of the test. It's reading about 67 degrees. Okay, we're gonna kick off the test. We have a beginning voltage of 16.3 to start. 7.47, I'm gonna call it 8 a.m. And I will start with the screen split. Left-hand side is map. Right-hand side is the traditional 2D sonar that I use 95% of the time. So at 9 a.m., about an hour in, voltage is reading 16.1. I'm going to change the active function because first of all, I'm a little bit worried about screen burning. And then I also want to simulate it um, in use like the average person might use a side view unit. So I'm gonna go home sonar. Let's go. Let's try traditional clear view and side view. In theory, this should eat the most power, so we want to be realistic in terms of simulation, so let's go with it. Select. All right, so we will come back in about an hour. Okay, so at 10 a.m., about two hours in, we're at 16 volts. I'm gonna go back to the original screen. So I'm just gonna keep bouncing back and forth. AM. Voltage 15.9. So at this point, we're going to bounce back to the triple split screen and we will come back in about an hour. Okay, 12 o'clock, so we are now four hours in. Voltage reads 15.7 and we're going to bounce back. And then we will come back in another hour. So again, the screen is red because of the shallow water alert, so no big deal. Okay, two o'clock and the voltage is 15.4. It does look like the side view combination is drawing a little more power, which is anticipated at 4 p.m., so that's eight hours straight. The voltage is showing 15.2. Um, I'm gonna conclude the experiment here. Um, I'll probably never be on this boat for more than eight hours. So I'm going to turn off the fish finder and check the um, voltage on the individual cells. In terms of the individual cell voltage, we are at, so we are at 3.88 volts. Fully charged, they are at 4.2 volts. So the reality is they're not even really being stressed. So um, if I had to guess, I mean, this system can probably go 16 hours. So while I wouldn't be um, on the water for 16 hours straight on the Pro Angler, it does mean that I could probably take this battery pack with me on a weekend overnighter trip and I would be just fine. So ultimately, is it worth it? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it depends on you. In terms of being cost effective, um, you're probably better off getting one of these every year or whatever and it'll ultimately end up costing less. But um, I, I like this system, you know. Um, I think it's kinder to the environment. I think it's much lighter. And it was a fun project for me. So I'm gonna stick with it. In terms of capacity, I think that this guy right here has more capacity than this guy right here. Unscientific, um, because I don't wanna run another test on this guy, but I, I do believe that at the very least, this thing does have more capacity. So 
Um, all in all, I, I'm pretty jazzed about the project and I'm going to continue using the lithium ion batteries. In conclusion, I hope you found this useful. As always, thank you for dropping by. I do appreciate you. Get out there, have fun, be safe, and we will see you soon. Bye for now.